questions, ask the RCS. All right. Better to ask ahead of time, ask a silly question, a dumb question, a way out there question. Um, ask it. Okay. It's much better to know before you submit something. Um, RCS will sign it as a reviewer in section C, number 10, and then it goes on. Um, okay, so that's July reports. Okay. Question. You bet. You bet. Oh, I've got to give it up. Oh, man. Let me do that. I like this one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Project EO information to employees. This is kind of in line with the assessment we took this morning. Okay, so that's what we uh, will be using as a tool every year to select who uh, is participate in the contract for uh, compliance review. And this is things that you all should be doing with your uh, with your employees and having your subs do with their employees as well. They uh, routinely inform employees of their uh, equal employment opportunities, civil rights, contract and policy procedures, uh, just in general, all of the EPO uh, requirements on the, on the project. It can be through meetings. How often should, or when and how often should you be holding uh, EPO meetings for your project? Anyway, that's my idea. Yep, yep, I didn't hear her. At least every six months, and then within 30 days, the time for the employee. They should participate in the EPO project specifically. Yes? That's for supervising or project person? We're talking project person. Project person. Right now, I'm talking about every, every six months, minimum. It can be more often. Uh, supervisory and man, or office personnel, within 30 days of the fire, and at least every six months. Both supervisory and project yep. every six months. Yeah. Yeah. And also, when a project gets ready to begin, you should be holding your uh, supervisory administrative personnel, office personnel meeting prior to the project beginning, and your project <coughs> staff as well. So prior to, at least every six months, and then 30 days apart. Right? <coughs> okay, prime and all subs of 10,000 or more inform all the employees. Before starting the project, new hires within 30 days. Uh, show them where their uh, bulletin board is. You'd be surprised. <coughs> Walked up to the board last year and standing behind the bulletin board. The labor interview, do you know where your job site bulletin board is? I've never seen it. <laughs> right here. Right here. So, so we understand what happens. What I do is I walk them over and say, here's your job site bulletin board. RFM, the EPO officer, introduced me to employees. And so we put on the little form when you have those on there. You know who your EPO officer is? No, never mind. It's going to introduce me to you. So it's the way I understand it. So a good of, a method of uh, disseminating this information employs handbooks, notices, posters, job site bulletin board, and meeting minutes. Meeting minutes. Okay, we have forms that you're welcome to use. One for uh, record of project personnel EPO meetings. Kind of captures up here. What topics can be discussed? I recommend if you don't discuss all of them, mark which ones you are discussing at that month's meeting or that, that, uh, that particular meeting. Fill in all the information at the top, and then you maintain these on file. Should you get selected for a compliance review, then I'd be asking to see the record of the And Dennis, just to clarify, is there a specified frequency for the project personnel meeting? At least every six months. For every project, project personnel? Project. For project personnel or supervisor? Both. Both? Both. It's yeah. Every six months and prior, at least every six months and prior to the project start. Okay. I'll confirm that, but that's okay. oh, yeah. what I remember. What? Is that mercy? Hmm? Yes. I don't know. I want to know if that was a new procedure. I will confirm that. I believe it's every six months or both. At least. There's no requirement, though. Say again? There's no requirement for it. It's just. When you when you want to know that information, you, you're supposed to be able to capture that information, right? Well, they don't have to turn it into me every month. They don't have to. No, 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 no. Right? I don't request it every month. Right. I don't request it every six months. I don't request it when there's a need to, or when we're doing a compliance review. Because it doesn't require it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Contractors, project EPO, submitted upon request. All primes and all sub subcontracts for ten thousand dollars or more. It looks a lot like July reports. Project specific EEO reports. Sorry. You should have them, but I don't know if I'm going to ask for it. 
What's an instance when I would ask for the uh, EEO report? Uh, I could request it then. If you're selected for a compliance review, I'd be asking. If uh, OJT, OJT training and evaluation meeting, we would need to see this to make sure that we're looking at the proper classification that you're looking at training on, on the job. Is this similar to the company wide? That's the company wide. They just changed the name or something? No, it, he's talking about a different item. Company wide is what he's talking about right now about OJT. Yeah, yeah, that's OJT a company wide. Is a company -wide. But this is, is probably, they look the same, they just kind of look the uh, You can do those once before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just to recap on that, informing employees of the rights, meetings, posters, drops at the bulletin board. Reporting on the workforce, project EEO reports, and July reports. For that, we're going to move into a break. Let's take 15 minutes. We'll be back in here quarter to three. And we'll move on to the last two segments of our, uh, of our workshop here.